Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, this is question number six, part C, from the January 2022 IAL Pure Mathematics P2 paper. Um, this question here, we've already found um, the midpoint of this circle and the radius is 25 in parts A and B. Now part C says, given that the point S lies on C such that the, Q, that the distance QS is greatest, find an equation of the tangent to the circle C at S giving your answer in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are integers to be found. So what does it mean by the point s lies on the circle c? It means it's somewhere on the circumference. And it says such that the qs is the greatest. Now for qs to be the greatest possible value, okay, for, for qs to be the greatest possible value, then s must be basically at a point where qs is the diameter of the circle. Okay, if it is such that, if it is such that um, S is as far away from Q as possible, then QS must be the diameter because S lies on the circle, Q lies on the circle. The greatest distance between Q and S is going to be the diameter of the circle. Okay, because that's the longest straight line that can exist in the circle, the diameter. Okay, that joins two points on the circumference. The longest chord is the diameter. So that means we already know the midpoint. The midpoint was given to us, or we found it earlier, as 8 minus 6. So we need to find the coordinates of S, which I'll call X, Y. We know Q, which is one point. So if we, can, we can see here we have um, the midpoint of this line S, Q, or Q, S. We have one end of this line Q, S. We've got to find the midpoint. So it's like we have Q is 15 and negative 30. We have M. We know what M is. It's 8 and negative 6. We need to find what S is, which we call it X, Y. X, Y. Because we know Q, S is the diameter for sure. Okay, from this description here. So now we need to find X, Y. So we can do this in a couple of ways. Let's do the algebraic method first, which most people would understand. You know that this is the midpoint of these two x values. Means it's the average. So if I add the x values of the endpoints together, 15 plus x, and divide by 2, I should get the midpoint. That will give me the value of x. So that's going to give me 15 plus x equals 16. Divide, uh, subtract 15 from both sides, x equals 1. So that is the x coordinate of the point S. And for the y coordinate, we do a very similar thing. We know that negative 30 plus y divided by 2, the two endpoints, the average of the two endpoints is going to give you the midpoint. So it's minus 30 plus y divided by 2 is going to give us negative 6. So you have negative 30 plus y equals negative 12. Multiply both sides by 2. So y is negative 12 plus 30, which is 18. Okay, so the coordinates of S are 1 and 18. We could have also figured this out by using some sort of um, a visual method. Like I know that this is the midpoint between this point and that point. So if I go from 5 to 8, I have to go down 7. So if I go from 8 to X, I've got to go down 7. 8 minus 7 is 1. And if I go from negative 30 to negative 6, well, I have to add 24. So from negative 6 to y, I have to also add 24. And negative 6 plus 24 is 18. So we end up with 118. Same answer. Okay, so now we have a point on the line. Uh, sorry, a point on the circle. We know the point at which we want to find the tangent. So we need to find the equation of the tangent to the circle at S, uh, at C, sorry. Um, so we need to find the equation of the tangent to the circle at S at this point here. So to find the equation of the tangent, which is a straight line, we need, as we said, two things. We need the point on the line, which we found now, and we also need the gradient of the line. So I need to find the gradient of this tangent. The tangent is like a straight line which brushes past the circle at the required point without actually cutting through it. So it's going to have this type of something like that. Okay, that's like the tangent to the circle at that particular point. Okay. So how do I find the gradient of the tangent? Well, we also know that the tangent and the radius, and ms is the radius, will always meet at right angles. If the tangent to the circle at s 
will meet the, gray, the radius that joins the circle at S at right angles. So if I know the gradient of the line from M to S, then I know the gradient of the tangent is going to be the negative reciprocal of them because they're perpendicular. So I know that the gradient of the line from MS is going to be the change in Y over the change in X. So I'll just write M8 minus 6. So the change in Y, which is 18 minus minus 6 over 1 minus 8, which is 24 over negative 7. So therefore, the gradient of the tangent is going to be the negative reciprocal. So it's going to be positive 7 over 24. So I now know the gradient of the line that I'm trying to find the equation of. And I, know not, I also know a point that is on that line. With those two pieces of information, I can find the equation of the line using the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I have y minus y1, so y minus 18 equals m, which is 7 over 24, times x minus x1, which is 1. So we want to find it in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are integers. So I don't want to have this fraction here, so let's multiply both sides by 24. So I have 24 times y minus 18 times 24. So you have 18 multiplied by 24, which gives us 432. So that's minus 432 is equal to, now I've got 7 times x, which is 7x minus 7. So I want to express this so that I have the x's on all the numbers on one side, but the best way really to do it is to keep the x term positive. So it really doesn't matter, to be honest, but I'm, I like to keep the x term as a positive term. So there's 7x minus 24y. I've got minus 7 plus 432. So I've got this 432. Okay, and I've got to... Um, I'm going to take away 7 from it, basically. Okay, so that's going to give me 425 positive. Positive 425. So we can say our answer is going to be 7x, 7x minus 24y plus 425 equals 0. That's the form required. You could have also written it as um, 24y minus 7x um, minus 425 equals 0. It's perfectly fine. I just like to keep the x term positive that's the way i like to do it but that's perfectly fine either way and there we have the answer to part c and the the end of this question number six other questions from this paper including part a and b can be found in the playlist in fact i'll have a, i'll have a link at the top here um to the question in fact the link underneath here to the question all right um um parts a and b of this question six at the top here i have a link to the playlist for the rest of the paper I'll have a, a link here to uh, questions from P2 about circles. As I said, a link here to the question, uh, previous parts of this question, and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Don't forget to look at the description list um, underneath the video to see other material you might be interested in. Thank you for watching and see you soon.